Well, hello there, naughty boys and girls. It is I, Disaster Winner! Welcome to the Tasty Ibbits Podcast. Here, we are all about the drag, the art, the trash, and the comedy. <laughs> Important announcement before you listen any further. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! That's right. Be careful because this episode we're gonna talk about the new Boule Brothers Dragula series called Titans with none other than notorious beauty colossus and gargantuan glamour goblin Monique Shane. They gonna take the mask off and sound off on this exciting new unreality competition. Let's get messy, uglies! Welcome, Monique Shame! Yay! Good to see you again, Boo Boo. Good to see you again. We got Titans. Oh my God! What do you think of this Boule Brothers Dragula Titans show? This shit is crazy. First of all, everybody's looks are just top tier. I don't think I would. I would not even be able to compete on a season with these girls. The drama does everything for me. I love it, <laughs> obviously. So let's say the Boulets were feeling generous and they said, Monique Shame, we need you on Titans 2. Would you hop on in and join the fun? I would try, yeah. I'd be surprised if they did. So if they did, I'd, of course, you, you don't get a second chance like that. So yes, I would. <laughs> I would love to see you on this show again. I know it's such a um, an emotional roller coaster being on one of these things. I can attest to that. Right. <laughs> but um, also, the one thing I'm noticing when watching this season is that because it's like in quotes an all star season, everybody knows each other and they have a good rapport with each other. Yeah. And they're more comfortable with each other. And they're having a lot of fun with each other. When I'm watching right now, I'm like, oh, I would love to just hang out with my old Dragula sisters and just right. shoot the just shit. Have fun. <laughs> you, know, you know, throw shade at people. Yes, even I throw shade. <laughs> and it would be super duper fun. No, I think it would too, yeah. And they all get along. Well, let me take that back. Most of them get along. <laughs> <laughs> and when they don't get along, mm, I guess maybe the... Example would be Abora and Erica, oh my gosh. not quite getting along, but they're not getting along because there is the familiarity, right? Yeah. They went through this before and, and now and they're not taking each other's shit. Basically. Right. We all had to live with each other. So they've already done this dance before. <laughs> That's right. You had to live with those monsters. I wonder if they still do that. I think they do. I was talking to Bitter Betty about it a little bit, and they all had to stay. Even if you're like in LA, I think you still have to stay there now just because of how strict filming is. The Blaze are like, you're not going home yet. <laughs> you're going <laughs> to stay and fight. <laughs> That's right. Also, I think, you know, once you get kicked out early, you have to stick around, which has got to be torture. Uh, yeah, I was like, send me home. I am ready to leave. They sent my ass back on a plane. They're like, nope, Monique's drinking too much. We need to get her home. <laughs> but everybody else, I think they had to stay. I, if I remember correctly, all, everybody else had to stay. So that would suck. <laughs> to watch all your sisters and stuff get to do all the challenges that you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reason why I was yeah. like, okay, send me home. <laughs> yeah, that would be super crushing. I would be, I would be just crying every day. Right. <laughs> But that would oh, never happen to me, of there next every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what are your just general impressions of this cast, let's say? I love the entire cast. I wasn't surprised by any of them, to be honest. I mean, there's a few people that I was like, okay, you were on last season. It, it's a little bit too soon. But the people that were on last season that are coming back, like Coco, for instance, 
Coco is the funniest person ever. Just watching her on the show just I made agree. me laugh so much. Like every time, I'm like she is such a shady bitch. So all you need is like a half raised eyebrow from Coco. And Girl, that's all you need. Gold. Just that arched eyebrow when she looks <laughs> at you. <laughs> I think it's all about growth, right? Mm -hmm. When you come back on the show, you know, from another season that was just like last year, it's okay as long as you show growth. And I think everybody is bringing I it think, from yeah, group. Yeah, I think everybody know? has stepped their game up from their seasons. Like, they did not come to play at all. And they're, like, out for blood. So it's making great TV. I'm sure the Belays are very happy. <laughs> oh, you can tell. Yeah. That they're just like they have the inner smile and they're like cackling to themselves about you know putting these people together. They're at each other's throats and everything, and they're just gleefully witnessing this debacle. They're gleefully torturing them. Yes, <laughs> throwing curveballs every which way. So yes, I would say like Coco Kane and Astrid Aurelia in particular, their drag is like way elevated from since season last four. season. Yeah, it's crazy. Astrid is a perfect prime example of that because even that last season that she was on, she was already doing good. It was already insane. And we've worked with Astrid. You have, I have in New York and stuff like that. Just watching her perform is amazing. She's just great performer. So yeah. good. And their looks this season, like they did not come to play either. Like, Everything is so elevated. All of them are just so, so elevated now. And it's mm -hmm. a joy to watch, actually. So what's your biggest highlight from the season? Or you can pick a couple if you want. We just have seen episode four, which is, what, what is that one called? The D&D, called... your, your one. That's right. The your, Dungeons your and Drag Queens. <laughs> I think so far, I think the sci-fi was my favorite just because everybody looks so insane. Like, Victoria's I didn't know where her body was I didn't know which <laughs> arm was what like that for me was one of my favorite looks of all I was like oh my god me too it looked that like she scary. was being eaten by whatever that monster is coming out of her chest I guess <laughs> I know it's crazy uh, I went on to their Instagram and they did a performance in that outfit I saw yeah and just walking down the stairs it was so creepy and weird it's I mean, scary. <laughs> so it really was scary and then the Teletubby Toilet Bowl has to be <laughs> the most iconic thing that Kendra... I love seeing Kendra back on, too, because Kendra was a little bit muted on her season. Like, she even said, she was like, on my season, everybody didn't let me talk. This time, she had a lot to say, and she just kept going, and she was just really fun to watch. She had so many good quotes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can see why the Bullies wanted to have them on again, just because whenever she opens a, her mouth, she has something funny to say. And that's really what I enjoyed when I was on season two with Kendra. You know, behind the scenes, we would just uh, gab and chat and have a have a fun time talking to each other. And she was always super funny and super warm. Yeah. Me and Kendra and Erica and Abora got along like the best throughout the whole entire thing. And then me and Bitch Pudding were best friends, too. <laughs> <laughs> And now, a short break for an important message. Hi, this is Sparkle Bart the Mushroom Gnome. You are listening to the Tasty Earbuds Podcast. Help support our endeavor by joining our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash coastlets on fire. One word. I'm Snorkel Bart the Mushroom Gnome. The Mushroom Gnome, the Mushroom Gnome, the Mushroom Gnome, the Mushroom Gnome. Sparkle Bart the Mushroom Gnome, the Mushroom Gnome, the Mushroom Gnome. Who were you most excited to see on the Titans? Who were you like, oh, I can't wait for what they bring? So Hoso, um, when I was doing shows in New York, Hoso was like super underage at the time. We flew her out, she performed, and it was just magical. And then seeing her get to top three last season, I almost cried when they didn't call her name for the top four or whatever. I literally was like at the edge of my seat, and they're like, you're it's a top four. So seeing her come back, really, I was so, so happy. Her and Abora, I was most excited for those two because Abora is such a talented little weirdo. I agree. And her ideas are just so out there. So they were my two that I was just so happy to see back on TV. 
For me, it was a bore just because I know what they can do, and I knew they're a brilliant artist and a brilliant performer. Mm -hmm. And also, they're super funny. They could be a stand-up comedian if they wanted to, or an actor, or whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Abora is going to be so cool. But Abora got involved in some sort of crazy love triangle. I know. Gagula. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it was a non-love triangle. I know that Astrid and Hoso had a thing, but I also know that Abora and Hoso had a thing. But I didn't know, like, coming on, that there was actual, like, relations that had happened during their little times apart or together. So that, I was just like, oh, my God, this is annoying, but I love it. <laughs> I don't know if it's a love triangle or a non-love triangle, because Astrid said, I have given my love to Hoso, but we have not consummated. I think there's some weird infatuation going on, yeah. but there's not a lot of action. I think that's what it is, too, because it was also weird because if you saw on like Instagram, Hoso was just with Abora when they were down for the ball, the Halloween ball or whatever. Like, I think they were all staying with each other. So I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. Like, y'all are crazy. I have two boyfriends now, so a triangle is too much. <laughs> but your triangle is going so good. I know my triangle is going good. <laughs> There's no drama here. You are like the poster boy for how a triangle should work, right? Exactly. So maybe they need to take a note from me. They should. They <laughs> should once. call you and get some pointers. All right. I love, love, love Abora, but... Me too. I am just uh, really frustrated uh, on these first few episodes how Abora has been so distracted and not giving their A++ game like they usually give. Yeah. I just want them to get through it all and just start doing really cool stuff. And, you know, we just saw episode four, and I think now we can really say that Abora has moved on and is in the game again. Episode four for them was, like, super good. I hope that continue. I think they're kind of snapping out of it now, which is good, because the, fir the first, like, two episodes, I was like, okay, Abora, like... You're being a brat. Like, literally, I can say that. I'm the queen of a being a bitch, but, like, Abora, you're being a brat. Like, stop. Get this money when we all know that you've won patches before with, like, Alaska. Like, just get to top three. Keep doing you. After seeing this episode, I think that they are going to put their head in the game and just stay away from the drama. Because at the end of the day, only one person's going to win. Mm -hmm. And Abora deserves to get up there. Agreed. You know, let's go over the first three episodes just a little bit. Mm -hmm. The first episode was Halloween House Party. <laughs> the elimination for this episode was Abora. I know, that was hard to watch too. But then when I, when I watched it, I was like, there is no way. Like, <laughs> there's just no way. <laughs> Everybody was shocked, of course. I was yeah. shocked. I was like, oh, what? Abora? the first episode oh this is terrible 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 and then i went on to their live instagram this thing was a setup i'm telling you when she went her. live yeah oh you know i'm the first out i joined the ranks of um pinch and felony you know there's no trick-or-treat that's just the way it is and they were like i think going back to a competition is just like really pathetic and i'm just like mm -hmm, girl shut up <laughs> <laughs> and then of course they pop back in episode two that was good you know Abora was behind that door hearing everything those bitches can say <laughs> too. You know that she came out there hella mad. <laughs> so in episode one, Elizabeth Black won the Halloween House Party. I guess they did like a little 1960s doo-wop sort of funny little monster mash kind of thing. That song is still stuck in my head. <laughs> that weird song. <laughs> but Elizabeth Black, so fucking good. The skills are just through the roof. And, you know, that pumpkin prosthetic head and she took the top off and her brains were in there. And, and the dress had like pumpkin, like the guts all made in the, I was just like, oh my gosh, Victoria. And this is the first episode. Slow it down. Like, give us, give us a chance to breathe here. <laughs> but everybody in that was pretty good, really, except Abora. But, you know. Um, <laughs> I still don't know what Abora's was. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Sort of like kind of an alien. Maybe an alien to that challenge. Right. <laughs> but I don't know if a real alien. But Yavska had a really cool outfit, too. So I'm like, oh, Yavska's going to bring in this season. It's awesome. I can't wait for Yavska. The pumpkin titties were so cute. <laughs> I was happy to see Yavska back on, too. They're funny. They're shady. <laughs> yeah, they were so entertaining. 
That's the, really the thing Yovska is, mm, I hesitate to say best at because they are really a good costume maker and, and everything, but just the personality, mm -hmm. all that little bitchiness. You cannot help but love them exactly. because they're just, you know, wearing that beret and just, yes, they're being shady, but they're so cute. I know. I love them so much. <laughs> little pocket Yovska. <laughs> pocket demon <laughs> and then melissa was turning it out i am so happy to see melissa on because that vampire it was pretty damn good i was like yeah that was fun i've never seen melissa in prosthetics before but she did that. interesting fact melissa is the only dragula performer i have never met for some reason i've never met melissa i think maybe i'm kind of intimidated because in the first season she was decapitating people with her words. So I was like, hmm, I better steer clear of this one. She's still doing it. She's stirring that pot. Melissa loves it. <laughs> I would see them, you know, down in the fashion district in L.A. walking around, you know, getting material and stuff like that. But I would be too scared to go up and fangirl on her. <laughs> but uh, next time I see her, I will say hello because I'm really enjoying them on this season, especially in the confessionals. They mm -hmm. just have this huge smile on their face and they look like they're really enjoying being there. And it's been a while since she's been on, so I think it's good that they brought her back. What, six years or something? Five or six years? Uh, I'm surprised, though. The only season one entry is Melissa. I wanted to see Zochi Mochi. I wanted to see Frankie Doom. I was surprised that Zochi Mochi wasn't on it, because I would have swore that they would have given her that. Because Zochi is another one that's just so damn talented in the way they paint. And they're just infectious because they're so sweet and... It, it rubs off on you. Like I've stayed with Zochi so many times and like just hanging out with them. It's she's just such a down to earth person. Maybe I'll chat with her and see if she was invited. You know, some people get invited to do these shows, but they can't for some reason, you know, yeah, they don't want to, or it's like they can't because the bullies don't pay you a dollar. Exactly. <laughs> so you can't afford to do it. Maybe the next um, podcast I will ask them to be on. I hope they will uh, want to do that. You know, she loves you. <laughs> And I love her too. And now for some more very important commercial messages. From Out TV. Do you need release? Scratch. Buckle up, baby girl. The fun's about to begin. <laughs> yeah! Oh! <laughs> this here is Crazy Town, and you're the man of it. Why does the party always end up in the kitchen? I'm here to probe your black hole. Eat your heart out, bitch. Oh, well, yeah? Yeah. Let's get some fun. I had my heart set on a pizza, though. Fresh as fuck. Mmm, mmm. Brace yourself. <laughs> what is this thing? It's a body up in here. Don't be sorry, be better. I'm still the baddest demon around. I'm a sexy yin yang, motherfucker. Feels like the real thing. <laughs> then winking me the fuck out. <laughs> Let's try this bitch. What the fussing began? <laughs> Six exciting episodes now available at outtv.com or just go to sadopsychiatrist.com for a direct link. Also available on the Out TV Apple TV channel. Sign up now, the first week is free. And also, also available on demand in the UK and Ireland via the Fruit TV, that's F R O O T dot TV channel. Use the code Disasterina for a free month. Okay, episode two Revenge of the Witch. Okay, this is the one where they had to make the crazy shoes. Yep. My favorite part of this episode was the Abora and Erica hot sauce showdown. Oh, gosh. That was so funny. I was just like, I could never. I love spicy food. Uh-uh. <laughs> they were just really duking it out. It almost seemed like it didn't really bother Erica at all. And everybody else was just, like, dying. And even Hoso was just like, I can't believe these white people just beat me because I've seen Hoso eat spicy food before. They can eat spicy food, but, like, Erica did not come to play. She was not allowed, about to let Abora have that at all. <laughs> it was fierce, and it was so funny when Bora was sort of stomping around. I was like, when are you going to give me the hot stuff? <laughs> it was so good. I would have loved to have been in that room. <laughs> I would have loved to be in that room, but I would have wanted to be that person afterwards because, you know, that booty hole would have been hurt the next day. <laughs> <laughs> 
what does that do to your body? You know, I know you can like have a Ulcer. glass of milk afterwards, but still, I mean, you, you probably ruined your whole digestive system for a whole week. Nope, I would never. And I like spicy food, but I won't do that. <laughs> And everybody had to do their own the shoesies. Fantastic shoes. My favorite. Well, it was a Bora shoes, and they were designed by this awesome oh, yeah. artist named Scott Hovey, who has a mini museum in Chinatown called Cakeland. They make sculptural stuff that kind of looks like cakes. Mm -hmm. And Abora had these sort of platform pumps which had like fangs in them. I saw that right away. I was like, oh, fucking Scott Hovey did these shoes. Right. And they were tall ass heels too. So like when it showed behind the scenes footage of her falling, I'm like, girl, I can't blame her. Mm -hmm. I can barely walk in like a kitten heel nowadays. Like it's been so long. I don't know how she was strutting in 10 inch heels. You know, I always wonder when drag performers do that as well, because I cannot do the platform pump. I just fall over like in two seconds. Right. <laughs> Whenever I perform, I actually perform in the same shoes. I just sort of dress them up to make them look a little different. It's super comfortable that I have. They have straps on it so they won't fly off. They yeah. are not platform pumps and only like a three inch heel. Sensible. Sense for us sensible ladies <laughs> that don't want to fall <laughs> or be a giant. <laughs> so what were your favorites from that episode? My favorite shoes were Abora shoes. And then I really, really liked Eva's shoes. It kind of reminded me of Coco's shoes, like the thigh highs in her season where it looked like flush stitched together. Oh, that's right. So yes. I was like, oh, that is awesome. Um... Kendra with that little purple, <laughs> purple <laughs> heel. I'm like, girl, come on. Put a sequin on it. Yeah, just a little rhinestone or a feather. You could have borrowed a, a feather from a boar. She's got a lot. <laughs> she keeps incorporating them to every look. Who is your favorite witch? I think my favorite witch was... I think mine was Eva. Yeah, I think mine, just the way that Eva looked and the colors and everything like that, it was just so weird. Victoria's was second. Victoria's was like, of course, Victoria's was second, but Victoria's just seen like, okay, I've seen this before. It's like, look, she does witches a lot. I mean, she's done a few witch challenges like now, I believe. So Resurrection. On, on Resurrection, yeah, it looked very similar. I have to go back and look for sure, but it reminded me of what they did on Resurrection. So I was like, yes, this is brilliant, but mm, I agree. I do like Eva Destructions. Mm -hmm. And also, Eva Destruction was on Twitter, and they mentioned that there were like little cutouts in the hoop skirt, and there were little children caught in the hoop skirt. You're like, how dare you take that from me? <laughs> Oh, I was so shady on there. I was like, I'd like to thank you for tributing me <laughs> in, you know, making, you know, the little children caught in the hoop skirt like I did on season two in the ghost episode. I love that dress. <laughs> but they fessed up and said, oh, yes, I was influenced by you. But I really am flattered by that. Eva, just so you know, I love you so much. Mm, and you had the best witch. Yes, for sure, for sure. But this episode, Yavska got eliminated. I knew. She got flushed down the toilet bowl. <laughs> Teletubby toilet bowl. I was shocked. Yeah. I was shocked that they were in the bottom. And then I was shocked that they were gone. All of Canada had to shut down <laughs> for a day of mourning. Good morning. <laughs> Wasn't this a challenge that they were all, like, trying to vogue, too? Mm -mm. A dubious <laughs> voguing. <laughs> that was a choice. <laughs> Lead the voguing, do the voguing experts, please. And tenant shields, no. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, you know, if you're a voguing expert, you can do that, but... Right. Mm, not on regular. Nope. nope. This is not the ballroom, honey. This is the Boulay's dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> So it was a bummer that Yavska could not show more of their looks. I still think there's going to be a twist somehow because the way that they said, if somebody goes home, the next person gets to come back. So like, and the Boulay brothers did say on their podcast that somebody does quit. Mm. So I don't know how that would go in line, but I have a feeling that the Boulays are about to switch things up a notch here in a second. <laughs> so yeah, they probably got a few evil tricks up their sleeves. As they do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. How about episode three, science fiction horror double feature? Yes, that was a scary one. That one was good. And you know, I gotta say, Victoria Elizabeth Black had the two most iconic drag aliens in the history of drag. For sure. <laughs> and they get 
half a win. I know. When I saw that, and I was like, but Hoso got it too. So I was like, okay, I'm happy with that. But girl, that was Victoria's. That was insane. It was scary. Like, if I was in a haunted house, I would run. Like, I would be terrified of her. I know. It was so gruesome. It really did look like these teeth were just exploding out of her. I know. She reminded me of something from, like, Resident Evil. Mm, yes, you know, the stuff that Victoria brings really is true horror because she's an effects artist. Yeah. She worked for, like, Haunts. Universal Studios. Yeah, so they are an expert at this, and they incorporate it with drag, you know. It's almost like, okay, here you go, Victoria, here's the crown. Okay. I know we're only into, you know, episode four or whatever, but that's kind of the way I feel. I think they're setting Victoria up for this one. Just that look alone, I was like, oh my god. This is terrifying, and Hosa's was terrifying too. They both build those like structural pieces. I like was watching it with my boys, and I'm just like, yeah, I would probably suck on a Titans episode because I wouldn't even know where to begin to have to like figure out where to put all this shit and how to build it up. <laughs> Well, I think you just have to have time to go through all this. They say, okay, you need like a dozen or 15 outfits in a month. Yeah. We'll start recording in a month. And you're like, what the fuck? And you want to do something new. How do you do it? That's the question that you're asking. How do you do it? I mean, you just have to have time to sort of work all these things out. Yeah. Well, she did the damn thing. That was crazy. Hoso's looks are really interesting because they're so dense. There's so much going on. There's just layer after layer. And you can't, like, tell what starts where it ends. Yeah. There's, like, weird little islands of things. She's doing some prosthetics, and then, but she's also doing this very kabuki-like, you know, makeup on top of it with sort of horror mixed in. Some people are saying the looks too similar. I don't think so. I think it's just that she likes to include so much in the outfit. I'm sort of the same. I like to I like density. I like stuff everywhere. Everywhere. I really enjoy looking at that. I love the way you look too. <laughs> but yeah, I think Hosa's got like an image and what the Boulay brothers want is they keep saying it, we don't want you to get lost in your character. And I think Hosa is a prime example of she hasn't done that yet. She's always going to still bring the weapons, the armor, the over the top in your face. Like every single week she's done that. So she hasn't had a bad week. Mm -mm. And now a short break for an important message. Mitchell Dobb here for Cold Sluts on Fire. Holiday season is right around the corner, but Super Monster season is already here. Celebrate now with artsy presents for your evil loved ones. The perfect choice is the Super Monster 9-pack series of fine art digital prints featuring your favorite uglies from Dragula. All lovingly designed by LA's most disastrous drag queen, Disasterina. Don't delay another minute. Go to ColesLet'sOnFire.com to order. brings me to the question what are you doing these days um i just got back from cleveland ohio i performed for the first time in like almost two years so that was interesting still had a mini panic attack in the beginning i was like uh oh, there's like 400 people out there like i am terrified like i don't want to go out there but I went out and killed it, and it was a lot of fun. I got to meet a lot of cool people that were fans. I sold a bunch of the enamel pins you made. I only have oh, like good. three minutes now, so that was fun. And right now, I'm just gearing up for the holidays. Um, I now work at Matt Cosmetics as the counter manager. So oh, cool! And did a pretty sweet job. So loving that. You gonna give me a discount? Yes, honey. <laughs> and I will be in LA next month, too. Oh, we should get together. We should. I'm going to go shopping and get a bunch of knockoffs for everybody since I can't afford real Louis Vuitton. <laughs> That's what Santi Alley is for. Yes. <laughs> Perfect for drag performance. Everything. <laughs> Xmas presents. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, you know, I have to say, I love your drag, and I want to see more. And there are people out there who definitely want to see more. So I hope you continue 
I have been checking out your Instagram and the new looks are very interesting and they're very Monique-y. They're very monstrous. Yeah. They're very horrific, but also you're throwing a lot of glamour in there. But I hope you're performing when you're coming to LA. We'll see. <laughs> We'll see. A lot, this whole trip took a lot out of me, but I'm glad that I did it. I missed it. And I have a bunch of looks that I've been working on. Like I just commissioned like a $500 like gown that hasn't really been seen yet. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm working on behind the scenes that will come out soon ish <laughs> when I'm not busy working. <laughs> well, I can't wait. We just saw episode four. It's fresh in our minds. Maybe. Dungeons and Drag Queens 2 Into the Underdark. I have to say, I love this format of this episode. They did it in season three, and I love it when these queens get into character and they try to act. It's so charming. It's so fun. I love it so much. I know you love your Dungeons and Dragons, honey. <laughs> I know you do. It was a really good episode. I think the acting, let's just say, Acting's not everybody's strong suit. <laughs> as long as you have the energy, right? Yeah. It was still very, very good. Once again, Coco. Coco slayed it with that gigantic axe. <laughs> no, it was really, really good. And Coco just, she is the body like of Dragula. Like, no one, just the pads and the proportions, that skinny waist. Like, she just does it for me. Like... In that outfit, the barbarian thing, it was so hot. Oh, it was so good. And also, you know, I really appreciate the trashiness that Coco mm -hmm. brings. It's I do like too. very beautiful, glamorous, but also as you can just tell that this is just a scuzzy, trashy bitch, and she just <laughs> brings it every time. It's so cool. And they're getting better every episode. Yeah. I'm really excited for Coco. Ooh. I want to see Coco get to the top. I want to see Toko get to the top so I can see those last three. I need the last three from her. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Love you, Coco. Oh, you know, something I noticed about Coco is that she do the X on her makeup, like on her chin or on her mm -hmm. cheek or something like that. Maybe a little disaster in influence there? Hmm? Yes, right. I didn't invent the letter X, though I am old enough to have. <laughs> I like to think that maybe Coco appreciate what i do and put a little accent on right her face as tribute to me right i saw that yeah a bitch can dream right <laughs> <laughs> so like the acting challenge when they're in their little groups and doing their cute little campaign it was so charming of course you know the one with abora and hoso that was the best one obviously and abora was doing this like scottish Garden gnome. <laughs> Did you see the shoes that Abora had? Yeah. It's like this weird, like, picket fence or something that they were wearing. That was weird. It looks like shoes were like things of cement with branches wrapped around it. <laughs> and there were masks. It's like mask drag. And they were like an evil druid mm -hmm. voice. I was there for it. It was so good. And I was like, oh, yes, finally, Abora's back in the game. This is so good. Oh, my God. Can't wait for more Abora. Right. And also, I think that was my favorite Hoso ever. Hoso looked so pretty. <laughs> that ponytail did it for me. <laughs> and they were super good with the acting. Yeah. Those characters for that team were purely believable. And Coco was in it. Hoso, Abora, and Eva were in there. They were all excellent. Oh, my God. So good. Oh, I want to join that campaign. Right. <laughs> and the other group, it was Melissa, Victoria, and then it was Erica, and who else? Oh, and Astrid. Uh, Victoria has been so brilliant over the whole season, and then... They stumble a little bit with the acting in this episode. But, you know, I got to say, the high elf she put together was so snatch. I didn't even mind. And honestly, I didn't even notice. I was just looking at that hip reveal the whole time. And, it, you know, that beautiful long blonde hair and everything. I loved it. But when she opened her mouth, it turned out to be like this blonde bimbo elf. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't remember her lines in there. <laughs> Oh, that's right. She's like, line, line, <laughs> line, line. It was kind of like Loris when he was on Resurrection. They were just like, stop, fix my hair, fix this. Like, <laughs> But, you know, I got to say, I would join up for the Victoria Elizabeth Black High Elf OnlyFans in a minute. 
because they were so fucking sexy. I did not care. I think it was even better that they were tripping over their lines and sort of wooden. I was like, oh, it's even sexier. Oh, my God. So I guess Victoria can do no wrong <laughs> in my eyes. I, it, well, that's what it seems like for everybody. I don't think that like it's just this wasn't her episode, but I think that everybody is going to have one of those. That's true. I still thought it was good. The look was good. I wouldn't have put her in the bottom, but the belays are shady. So, <laughs> so um, predictions. Let's get into predictions. Monique shame predictions. Okay, so my top three, just going off of what we're seeing, track record, everything, I think it's going to be Coco, Hoso, Victoria, and that's my top three. Melissa's been doing it for me too, but I just think that they're such strong competitors right now, and their head is in the game, and they're just not fucking around with anything, so... I am really excited, you know. I think our season, season two, is the best season. Yeah. But there's something about having all these monsters who know each other and the rapport they have, which is really compelling. They are just having a grand old time, and I can't wait for more. This is really exciting and fun season. Everybody's really enjoying it. And, uh, you know, I don't care for drama, right? I just... Right. You I'm stay a, clear. You stay clear of it. I'm over here, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the drama when it's sort of like this imaginary relationship drama, but when it's drama uh, associated with actually trying to win one hundred thousand dollars, I'm totally there for it. So give me more of that. Right. Give me more scraps where they're just at each other's throats, like trying to top each other. Exactly. That's what I want to see. <laughs> well, Moniki. We had a fun time. I'm so glad you got onto my funny little podcast. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. It's great talking to you. And you're doing so good. I'm so proud of you and so happy for you. And I can't wait for more Moniki shame on the stage. I hope we see that. Right. And I will see you next month. We'll have a little dinner date. <laughs> yeah, we will. It'll be fun. Love you. Love you too. Mwah. For the podcast by Dr. Stevo. Go to drstevo.com. D O C T O R S T E E V O.com. I would like to personally thank our fantastic Patreon supporters. You are the ones who are keeping this podcast growing and going. Love you. Joseph Reich, Jeffrey Gallet, Indra Lonstein. Amy Marsh, Oliver J, Jeremy McNabb, Keith Ferguson, Annalyn Bond, Rollerblaze, Sazzy C, Silvana Ahmed, Tom, Ali, Carrie Wolf, Eric Peterson, John Gidbent, Renee Redanius, Melissa Sarah, Nikini Kill, Julia Levine, Rhea, Simon Law, Spencer Montoya, Story Nagel and Katrina Miller. Thank you so much. And remember, Patreon supporters, if you have any questions for the magical disaster Nick Queen herself, just go ahead and send me a message to Patreon and I will answer your question on the air on the podcast. Special perks for you. You want to be as wonderful as those people? Well, then go to Patreon, Patreon, I don't know how to fucking pronounce it, dot com forward slash cold sluts on fire. One word, give us plenty of your greenbacks. We need it.